Let's do an example problem for how flex budget variances can be calculated and used to make a document called a standard cost income statement. In this problem, we're going to be Dawson Incorporated. We are a privately held furniture manufacturer. And for the month of August 2017, we had the following standards set in place for our production of wicker chairs. We assumed, we budgeted that our direct materials cost was going to average $5.50 per square yard of wicker used to make these chairs. We said that each chair that we were going to produce was going to take three yards. We estimated that the cost that we would have to pay for labor for the direct laborers who manufacture these chairs was going to average $10.50 for every hour they worked during the period, and that the production of each chair was going to require our direct laborers to work for half an hour. These are the things that we would have used when we calculated out our master budget in the first place. They are our standards, what should happen during the period. Well, what actually happened? At the end of this period, we have determined that this company produced 2,200 wicker chairs. To do so, they used 6,200 yards of wicker, our actual direct material quantity used, and they paid, on average, $5.70 for each square yard of wicker. They incurred a total of $9,844 of actual direct labor cost during the period because their workers actually worked 920 hours to produce those wicker chairs, and they made, on average, an actual amount of $10.70 for each hour that they worked. So now we're going to compare what actually happened, these numbers that we have here, to the standards that we had set forth on the prior slide, doing a flex budget variance analysis to determine what happened, like where were our differences from our expectations, and from those, which one should we look at first to figure out how we can improve our performance. You should break down your variances by your different categories. And for this example, I'm going to do it with just the two direct components of production, our materials and our labor. Starting with our direct material variances, let's start with the actual cost that Dawson Incorporated incurred to produce chairs during the period. I'm going to start by taking the actual quantity of direct materials used and multiply it by the actual unit price that we paid. We actually used 6,200 square yards of wicker, and to acquire that wicker, we paid an average cost, actually, of $5.70 per yard. So buying 6,200 yards at $5.70 apiece means that Dawson spent $35,340 in material costs for actual production. Well, my goal here is I want to isolate how much we missed by our variance, if you will, between our flex budget and our actual costs into what portion of that I can attribute to the change in price of the materials, how much, you know, is it caused by the fact we had to pay more or less to buy this wicker, and the efficiency, how much wicker we actually had to use to make a unit. And to do that, I'm going to need the no-name column. And to find the no-name column, as I call it, you take your actual quantity used and you multiply it by your standard, or in this case, our budgeted unit price. What we actually used 6,200 pounds of wicker in production and set forth on our standards we said that each square yard of wicker was going to cost us five dollars and fifty cents so if we hit that standard if we did pay an average cost rate of 550 for the period to get those 6,200 yards we would have spent thirty four thousand one hundred dollars and then lastly I want to find our flex budget amount for this particular cost input and the flex budget amount is, again, what should have been if you hit all of your standards. Like if we predicted perfectly the amount and cost of material that would have to go into each and every chair, how much would we have paid according to those standards to make the actual number of chairs that we made? So I'm going to take our actual units produced, which was 2,200, and I'm going to multiply it by both of our standards. And our standards are that it was going to take three yards to make each chair and that each yard of wicker was going to cost 550 on average and 2200 times 3 times 550 is 36,300 dollars and now i have all the information that i need to figure out my variances because they're just the gaps so the gap between our actual cost incurred and our no-name column is a difference of 1240 in this no-name column what I'm doing is I'm isolating out one 
you know particular reason that we could have had a difference and this one I'm isolating out price because we're using actual quantity used for both these calculations so the difference is all attributable to the fact that our actual price was different from our budgeted price how do I know this is unfavorable this was bad for the company because the actual amount we paid per square yard of wicker is greater than the amount we estimated 550 so we can say that we had a $1,240 unfavorable direct material price variance for production of these wicker chairs because we spent more per square yard than we expected to. The other gap is our efficiency variance, which is the difference between our no-name column and our flex budget amount. And the difference between those two numbers is 2,200. Again, we're isolating out one thing. Well, both of these are using budgeted unit price. So the difference in these two numbers can all be attributed to quantity. We have the actual quantity we used in these first two in this calculation over here give us the amount we should have used if we used the budgeted quantity per each unit we produced times the actual number of units that we produced. This variance is favorable. How do I know that this variance is favorable? Well, first it's a cost and it's less going this way. But you can also look at it this way. We actually used 6,200 yards of wicker. Had we used the budgeted quantity per unit, that we expected and made the actual number of units that we made if we hit that standard how much should we have used and if we used three yards a piece for 2200 chairs we should have used that comes out to 6600 we should have used 6600 square yards of wicker so we actually used 400 less than we had proposed in our budget if we hit that standard and at a rate of 550 per yard that means that we had $2,200 in cost savings from our prediction because we used way less material than we thought we were going to. And then flex budget variance is just the difference between what you actually paid and what you should have paid had you hit both your standards. And the difference between those two numbers on the end is 960. Our actual costs were $960 less for direct materials then they should have been according to what we thought it was going to cost to buy each square yard of wicker and how many square yards of wicker it was going to take to produce each chair. If you look at an unfavorable variance like it's a positive and a favorable variance like it's negative, if you add those two numbers together, you come up with 960. So your flex budget variance in this case should always be equal to the two variances that you have up above and we're good here. So now we've managed to go through and figure out why direct materials were cheaper than they should have been according to our standards. And the reason for this is not because we got them cheaper in terms of you know how much we had to pay for each square yard. It's because we didn't have to buy as much because we used way less wicker in production than we thought we were going to. We had a very favorable efficiency variance. Moving on to our other direct cost component, which is our direct labor variance. We're going to do the same series of calculations, starting with our actual cost incurred, this time for labor. So it's actual quantity used times actual unit price. The actual amount of quantity used, labor hours that we needed for production, was 920. Our actual unit price was we paid an average wage rate of 1070 per hour to our employees. And 920 hours at an average rate of 1070 per hour actually cost us $9,844. I'm going to again isolate out the portion of our flex budget difference, which is attributable to price, and the portion that is attributable to efficiency, which means I need to do my no name column. So actual quantity used was 920 times our budgeted unit price. We didn't expect to pay 1070 per hour for labor. We said before that we thought the average cost of labor per hour was only going to be 1050. So if I take 920 and multiply it by 1050, come up with 9,660. And now I need our flex budget amount. What should have been had we hit both of our standards? So to make 2,200 shares, if we hit our budgeted amount of time that it was going to take to produce each chair, which is half an hour, and we paid our budgeted amount of labor cost, 1050 per hour that we thought we were going to have to pay originally, then production of those 2200 shares at half an hour piece, paying 1050 per hour, should have cost Dawson $11,550. Now we can find our variances by filling in the gaps. The difference between our actual cost incurred, if I can find my cursor, and the no name column is $1,000 or one, excuse me, $184, and it is 
unfavorable. How do I know it's unfavorable? Because our actual average cost per labor hour was greater than we had budgeted for. So we spent more in terms of hourly wages for our employees. What about efficiency variance? Well, the difference between those two numbers, 11,550 and 9,660, is 1,890. How do I know it's favorable? Same thing. Let's look at if we took as much time as we predicted to make each one of these chairs and we made the actual amount of chairs that we did, what amount of time should it have taken? Well, if we made 2,200 chairs and each one took half an hour, first two numbers over here, that would come out to be 1,100 hours. We didn't take 1,100 hours. We took 920 hours. We took 180 hours less to produce these chairs than we predicted we thought we were going to. And because it took us less time, we had to pay less labor costs. So our overall flex budget variance, the difference between the numbers on the end, is $1,706 favorable. It's, our actual cost was way less than what it should have been. Why is that? It's because the small increase that we had in the cost of labor per hour was more than offset by the fact that we took way less time to produce these chairs than we originally thought we were going to.